The Quiet Warrior Show, where we help top leaders find their pathway to incredible success and a lifetime of happiness. Here is your host, Tom Dutta, The Quiet Warrior. Well, welcome to The Quiet Warrior Show. My name is Tom Dutta, and I'm excited to have on the show today the co-founders of California Clean Skin Care, and what a duo they are, Clarissa Shetler and Christine Falsetti. Hey, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Hi, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, first of all, I love already what I know about you. I was inspired by some of the things I read, and and I'll talk a bit about how I connected to you over the show. But this this is really all about you. You're connecting from California, somewhere around Silicon Valley. I'm up here in Vancouver, British Columbia. So why don't I turn it to to you, Clarissa, first, and tell us a bit about yourself. Um, so I guess you would say that I'm like a nerdy scientist. Um, my background is um, in pharmaceuticals and chemistry, and um, and. Basically, uh, skincare has been a passion because I've always been on this huge quest to, uh, to find the right skincare solution. That's awesome. I made a note here, nerdy and scientists. Okay, you already got my mind racing on that. And there's probably going to be more wisdom coming out of you than you even know. I'm going to turn it to you, uh, Christine. Tell us about yourself. I guess uh, to contrast that, I'm more of a biotechnologist, I would say, and that I'm, I'm a scientist as well. And, and we're both nerdy, but I also take an engineering and structured approach to what we're doing and, uh, and feel just fortunate to be in Silicon Valley and have met Clarissa and be on this journey together. Well, that's pretty awesome. And I have the benefit of uh, sitting here looking at your bios and your pictures. I mean, just a, a great profile you both have. I want to build you up a bit. I mean, this show is all about the hero's journey. It's about people who come to tell the story of their life and success, but also those who park their ego at the door and they get into the backstory. Sometimes things that are challenging are not so positive. It's really in those nuggets, uh, you two, that we, we can find the gifts. Uh, let me just build on what you've said. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about Christine first, co-founder of the company. That's interesting to me, uh, business executive. The NASA scientist thing, I mean, as, as a Canadian, I've followed NASA as a kid in the space shuttle program and all that. It's just awesome to have that kind of leadership in that field. Uh, world traveler, there's probably a story in that, avid walker and hiker. Toxin-free guru, now there's one that's going to get us going. And uh, and then on the flip side, you know, Clarissa, the pharmacist and health expert, uh, we probably will learn some things from you today about both sides of that spectrum, a uh, natural part of uh, healthcare. Uh, you're a mom community volunteer, global explorer, devoted tennis player, love that, an avid snowboarder. And just so you know, I've never done anything on one one ski before. <laughs> I think you can probably be mine. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I can put the spotlight back on you in, in just a moment here. Uh, just a personal story as I'm talking to you, my mind's going in several directions. When I was in high school, I was a nerdy kid. I was kind of an A student. I some of you know my background already. I write about it in my book. I, I was sort of escaping what was going on in my home. And I like to say that I, I, was, I was the nerdy guy that none of the girls would date. <laughs> so so later, <laughs> la later in life, I've come full circle now and I'm wide open for your criticism and feedback. Uh, but enough said about that. Let's get right into this. Now, you know, here you were and together. You started this amazing company. We're going to hear about that. But really, the gift lies in the story, the backstory. So I, I'm going to put you on the spot, uh, Christine, first to just take us way back and tell us, go as far back as you want. Uh, tell us about you know where you started in your life and got this dream or this vision of uh, of building a, a, a company together. I think it, um, you know, started for me. I, I like to say Clarissa and I met in kindergarten. Um, and, and not when we were in kindergarten, but when our kids were in kindergarten and we got to, we, we were moms that had kindergartners in Silicon Valley here and, um, both nerdy moms. I was at NASA as a NASA scientist at the time. And, uh, and she was a, you know, she's a pharmacist and, um, and we would just do things together. But, um, about a year and a half into it, uh, in the middle of first grade, my oldest son, um, got sick and he got cancer. And. Um, that was a very difficult time, but, and all through that period, 
Clarissa and her family were by our side, coming to the hospital and helping us out, and advising us on medications and what to do and helping us with social support and organizing people. And even um, my son who got Burkitt's lymphoma and then passed away um, eight and a half months later, after a lot of chemotherapy and everything, um, we continued our friendship and she went and she said, was the first one to say to me, you know, okay, go for a walk. You need to get outside. You need to exercise. You need to get positive endorphins in your life. You need to, to help you move forward. And she helped me continue that journey and to be a, you know, a conscious warrior and going through the grief process. And we continued to hike. And one of the things then we shared as we were out hiking is that, you know, I had sort of said, I, I didn't understand how this thing happened to my son. He was very healthy. I had been extremely conscious and healthy throughout my pregnancy. You know, I didn't drink any coffee. I didn't have any caffeine, no alcohol. I like, you know, bought organic food. I made everything. But I, we started to talk about, you know, what else is in our environment and things that we can't control. And one of the things that became clear to us as we were just looking at our families was that, you know, skincare was both a passion that we both shared um, because it's something you're putting on your bodies. And I thought everything we bought, I trusted big companies. I thought, well, if, if it says something like a Neutrogena or whatever, it's clean. You know, they would give us clean stuff and it would be healthy for us. And it says it does this for you, but it there was a lot of things that were toxic and compromising our body. And we started to talk about that. And we thought, gosh, there's got to be better stuff out there. Somebody's got to be doing this. And what we realized was that there weren't. There, um, that people were not doing clean and effective skincare products. And there was a real need. And so we started to make our own stuff and found that we could do this. And we said, let's launch a line. And so we basically did that. That was our journey to get here. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. Uh, first of all, before we get to get to you, Clarissa, I've got to say that my heart grew three times in my chest, kind of like that you know, kid show I used to watch, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, that one scene. And I want to honor you for the courage. And I know every moment you need to talk about that painful story is a, an emotional one for you. I can't imagine that every year when there, there's birthdays and notable events in the timeline of what would have been your son growing, that you're going to go through this journey. So on behalf of all of us, you know, we're sorry for your loss. Uh, just really quickly, how old was your son when he, when he passed on? He was seven and a half, and he wow. was and he was our warrior and hero. He just really, I think, for a lot of people, he just fought strong and hard and put a brave face on fighting. Oh, that's people. awesome. So. Well, that's awesome. And they say that children in the wombs of their mothers uh, are connected to their souls. There's yeah. something I read before that when a child dies, the mother seems to grieve more. And I always used to think, well, it's because of us dumb guys who can't show emotion. But really, you know, the, the child is in the room and a part of the mom dies. So we want to honor you for that. So we'll come back to that as we weave that through the story. But what a great purpose to have an idea to make the world better. Uh, uh, Clarissa, tell us about where did it all begin for you? And how did you get to the point of, you know, meeting, uh, meeting your partner and starting this amazing company? Um, you know, we, yeah, Christine's exactly right. We had the privilege of meeting because of our, our oldest children. And, um, and unfortunately, I lost a child um, when, just before we started kindergarten. It was, um, I ha we had our third child and um, she was born, but she had a hole in her heart. And so she didn't survive. And, and no parent should ever have to um, actually bury their child. I mean, it's, it's just a, um, it's, it's just a heartbreaking thing. And, um, and so I didn't have, like Christine, Christine's story is so much more difficult. I mean, she just went through, um, you know, just agony and just pain. Um, and, and at the same time, you really saw the community come around and really show her support and their, our support and love. But since I had a child who had passed away um, just before we had met, I kind of knew that, you know, you need to get out there. You need to embrace, you know, life and get out there and exercise and do all the things that your son would have wanted you to do. And, and so Christine and I, we always have had this um, connection together <clears throat> Because we've always felt that, 
we're always wanted to kind of pay it forward and we're always out there helping people. Christine's always, always been, has a huge heart and she's always wanted to, you know, put her best for effort and, and lend a hand to anyone else who needed advice or help. And, and the two of us kind of um, connected on, on that, not even realizing that we were going to start this huge massive business together. Um, but because her son had really passed away of, of, you know, of cancer, mostly, you know, who knows if it was internal or external, the way it, um, you know, developed. But um, my story, I've always been on the search for um, clean skincare because I was diagnosed at a young age with this, um, this, this skin condition called ichthyosis. And um, my derm- all the dermatologists when I was young were, t- were telling me to use uh, Crisco lard. So that big, huge, big canister of lard would sit on the side of my bed. <laughs> I would have to like slather that thing all over my body. It was really gross. I'm sorry. Um, to, I'm, sorry to visual, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to visualize. <laughs> I'm visualizing on a hot California night, like you on a turning on the fire and roasting away there. That's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was. I mean, I grew up in Hawaii and and California, so I'd be bringing that big lard thing, you know, back and forth. But um, <laughs> so it was. But it was real. It was. And having this skin condition, it covered, you know, it was basically from head to toe and, um, and it was embarrassing, you know, I would always wear long pants and, 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 um, I was always trying to cover it up. And so I was always on this quest to find the right type of skincare. And, um, and because Christine and I, we always, um, we always love to go hiking and get outdoors, um, just to, you know, to breathe life into our lungs. Um, on a hike one day, we started talking and evaluate all of our options and because of you know, her experience with carcinogenics and things. And, um, and we were both scientists. We really dived in and, you know, just started to take a look at what was out there. And like what Christine said, that all the things that were there were pretty dark and bleak and nothing was really truly effective and, um, and safe and clean. And so that's how we kind of started our journey together. Wow, that's that is simply amazing. I mean, thanks so much for sharing. Again, I've got to honor you for sharing that painful moment in your life. I can still hear that inflection point in your voice as it breaks, telling it. Uh, I can feel myself uh, in your story and on that moment, and know that every time you tell that story, here's the thing to both of you that they say that when you tell your story, you tell it to the right tribe. There are going to be thousands of people listening to this interview over time who will hear that part, they'll come on thinking it's going to be a talk about skincare and business and they'll hear that and their hearts will break and grow at the same time. They'll say, that's my story. So that is the heroic part of this. Keep doing what you're doing with that. I believe there's a term called humility and uh, Clarissa, after, when you were talking, that came into my head. But the sign of a great leader is the ability to be vulnerable and show humility. And man, you two got that in spades. So that's fantastic. I didn't know the depth of that story. So we're honoring that. I want to shift gears a bit now and say, okay, well, we got through and navigated through that difficult chapter. You both met. Uh, so you sound like you've got you know, personalities that, that have uh, complementing each other. And so you decided to start this thing. Tell us, uh, and, and either of you jump in and, and, and do whatever you want to do there. The, the company itself, tell us the name of it and you sort of how it evolved and uh, give us a little commercial about you know, what, what you're doing with it and what you have. Christine, go for it. Okay. <laughs> well, I think, you know, we, we were trying to figure out what to name the company, and that's a really good question because uh, we were, and I think, uh, you know, we came up with a bunch of different names, but then we, we originally came up with C2 because it's Christine and Carissa. We were just kind of calling it, that was our special project name. And then, but then we were out on one of our hikes one day, and we said, you know what? We're both from California. This is all about clean beauty. Let's call it California Clean. And because that, that's exactly what, you know, it's about. It's about having better than natural, better than organic, healthier, safer, setting higher standards for ourselves and for our friends and our, you know, the earth and everybody. And um, so we really wanted to define that we had these clean, healthy, effective standards for people. So that's how we came up with California Clean. Yeah, I just, uh, I just love that. I was looking at the logo and everybody, uh, you'll be checking this out, I'm sure, but the C2 is at the top of it. And I was thinking, what is that? 
That's pretty, uh, pretty clever. Uh, tell me, tell me, and I'm just going to, you know, go in another direction about market. Now here I am as a, as a man, but there's women obviously in the marketplace and you know, the, the, the market is overplayed. There's billions of dollars uh, in market share. I know a little bit about that. And as you said, it, it's so amazing and true that many of the products actually are misleading. And I don't know a lot about FDA regulations and things, but sometimes what you see on the box and what's in the box is different. And so the average person gets confused. It's brand proliferation. And then you have this new era of purposeful products coming out and saying they're natural. And sometimes the consumer, well, they just don't know. I know it took a long time for the word organic to fit. And now as I shop, a lot of people I hear in the store are asking for, do you have any organic melons? Do you have any organic apples? So tell us about your your product line and in, in in just a few minutes what makes it different and why sh- why should we try that um i think you want to go closer or you want me to uh well i just wanted to say a couple of things on our logo um you know christine it was it's definitely uh c2 but you know because of the size thing we all we always call ourselves c squared and that's how yeah. the logo yeah. kind of came up you know because you know um we just kind of yeah. like use that and that was kind of like the backstory on how we developed it and then you know c2 or um also uh reference c2 or california queen as well yeah so there's those both those kind of um logo references um and from, but go ahead Christine, yeah. I'll, and then i'll talk right after you yeah go ahead well, I think then, you know, that's right. Thanks for reminding us that it is C squared that we used to say all the time. And it is that nerdy little scientist thing that always you know, drops <laughs> in between the two of us. So she's absolutely right about that. I was going to say on the organic thing, you know, like I always look for organic stuff because it is cleaner, basically. It's, um, and so and if you're buying whole foods, you know, like uh, strawberries, you always want organic, you know, even bananas because they're high fat concentration. I think that's great that we have those choices in the marketplace and that we have that. But in terms of skincare, you know, I thought, oh, that would translate as well. But um, organic, you know, it's not, it's a blend of things when you get to skincare. So you can have an organic ingredient in there, but the rest could be dirty chemicals. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the real thing that I was like, really? (laughs) You know, I was surprised. I felt betrayed, honestly, by the industry at some level. And, and so I, and that's why I think we, you know, set out with more of a mission and a passion to say, wait, we need to be more conscientious about this whole, you know, choices that we're making in this domain. And, um, and so it could be organic, but I could have, you know, organic poison oak and put it in a blend for you too. And that wouldn't be something I'd want on my skin, yeah. you know? So it really, I think it, it's important to be clean, which means that it's effective and it's healthy and it's, um, you know, it's not going to give you a toxic reaction. You're not going to have an allergic reaction. You know, it doesn't cause cancer. It doesn't disrupt your hormones. It, you know, it's, um, it won't mess with your endocrine system. Yeah. And there are a lot of things. There's only 38 things that the United States screens out and it's, uh, and they haven't passed any legislation since the 1930s on this. And, um, you know, we have almost more than 5,000 things now in our growing database that we do not allow in our formulation. Wow. And we do, the, and we do the research. We go to the publications and we, you know, do our homework and it takes us sometimes longer to get products out. But, you know, with Clarissa's pharmacy background and my um, undergraduate background in chemistry and biology, we are committed to being those nerdy scientists and bringing, <laughs> what we, you know, the healthiest products that we can to market. So. Yeah, I think that's awesome, but yeah. it, it is true. So, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that, um, Christine, you both are right about the labeling. And um, basically, uh, the, the big watchdog is the FDA. And the thing is, is that the FDA really only can monitor prescription medication. They don't have much weight or they don't really actually regulate um, any of the over-the-counter or OTC uh, formulations that we see that comes into contact with personal care and cosmetics and things like that. And so it's kind of the wild, wild west when we think of um, the labeling because there's really um, no enforcement or regulations or checking um, to see if, you know, your products are truly organic or if they're botanical or or whatever, you know, you what you can put on the label is anything you want. And like what Christine said, she felt betrayed um, because, 
you know, all the, the, the large brands and everything, we can do what we want or, you know, you can put anything where you want. And so you're really looking for companies that have integrity and are going to do the ethical thing. And, and one of the things that Christina and I were really focused on is we looked at the ingredients because we felt like the ingredients are the building blocks to a product. And so we actually started meeting up with ingredient founders and made sure that they were ethically sourcing using, you know, enzymes as opposed to solvents and, um, and chemicals to extract um, organic and green compounds for the, for the ingredients. And so that's where our science, um, chemistry and engineering background has really played a huge advantage because we actually can um, um, really evaluate if they're using the best practices and the safest practices um, to create their, their ingredients. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I just want to acknowledge that. I mean, one of the things that came out of mind, you're taking my head in a journey in so many different directions with such such great things you're saying there is the fact that when you talk about integrity, I always look at as a as a businessman or as an executive, that's my background. I first thing I do is I check out the owners. You know, one of the the roles I had growing in my career when I was in the banking industry was that of a commercial lender. And when business owners came in, the first thing we would look at to qualify the loan was not the product, uh, not the facts and figures. We looked at the experience of the owners. And I want to acknowledge that for the listeners as to why I think your company's going places is that you both have this background in science, pharmaceutical. You both have the knowledge, but you both have this integrity because you come from a place where you've lost people in your lives due to cancer and other issues. And while we, you, know, you can't just directly connect it to an ingredient in a product, we know that the things you put on and in your body, because we came into this world as golden souls, we came into this world as little people that had these, you know, bodies and systems that that gets uh, contaminated over time by the environment. So I just love that. The one last thing I want to say, just to build on that, I love the C2 logo. And now that you said C squared, yeah, it's nerdy and it works. So when I, when, <laughs> When I, when I look at this, uh, this whole situation there, I want to take you in a different direction now that we understand the great uh, things you're doing in the products and whatnot. And we'll t- let you to tell us about where we can get those at the end uh, because I'm going to recommend that. Uh, I'm going to take a bit of a right turn about purposeful companies. I think it's a teaching moment on the show to have founders on like you because you've created a brand. But here's the thing. When I hear about skincare products, products and companies. It's no different than coffee companies. They're all out there. We're all confused. We don't really understand why should we go with this one versus that. But there's some good research that says that the next generations that are going to run the world, the Gen Xers, the Gen Ys, the millennials, maybe my daughter's in there at age 21, uh, they look for companies that are changing the world, that have a, a purpose, a meaning. And I think that's what the world is becoming. And so when I hear about your stories and you've put to the brand, the face of your own personal stories and why you created uh, this company and the product lines, it's really compelling for me to take a look at what you're doing versus maybe another company. So I want to get into that. This is a big question. If I was to throw it on a whiteboard in a what I call strategic planning session, where usually you have founders in a room, the question kind of goes like this. What will this world look like when you've finished your work? Now, I know I'm putting you on the spot and usually you would have some time to think, but just... Now, this is about your dreams and what you're trying to change in the world. Uh, why don't we start with, well, we'll start with uh, Clarissa. What comes to mind with that question? You know, I think one of the, the big missions for us um, as being founders for the company is, is education and awareness. And um, I think both Christine and I are extremely passionate about passing the knowledge on because, you know, whether you buy C2 California Clean um, we just encourage everybody to take a look at all the products they use, whether it's personal care or cleaning or food. And um, and we have actually aligned with a um, nonprofit called um, the Environmental Working Group and their science team and research team. Um, and we also have been talking with um, Think Beauty, which is up in Canada. But um, ideally, what I think both Christian and I would hope for is a much more educated a much more aware, um, much more awareness around, you know, the products that we use, how safe and effective they are, um, what the long-term effects are in terms of 
the sustainability in our body and also to the environment. Um, in terms of the body, I don't think people realize how naughty and dirty some of these um, inactive ingredients are and how much they can affect um, our cognitive system, our nervous systems, our reproductive systems. Um, there's all these new types of diseases that weren't necessarily around 50 years ago. And um, like we never really saw ADHD or autism or, you know, these types of, uh, of disease states and they're kind of new. And I, I have to attribute some of it to our food and our personal care and, and just the environmental impact of the things we're doing to our world. Oh, totally. I just, so, wanted, um, I, just, I just wanted to jump in there to honor that comment. I'm going to ask you this uh, and, uh, to build on that. Uh, you know, I, I, I do a lot of uh, uh, research. My wife and I love to watch uh, movies, documentaries. I've seen a, a, the Netflix show Food Inc. I totally agree with what you said about what goes in your body and some of the diseases we didn't hear about before. You know, my roots are back to India and Fiji where my parents are from. And, you know, many cultures grew up on, in that generation understanding that you know, the natural elements of the earth is how you, you, you kept the body healthy and healed it. Now, all of a sudden, we have all this junk. Tell me about one naughty ingredient, just uh, if you can, in just a minute, and uh, what that could do to the body. Oh, my gosh. There's so many. I mean, the one that we, we're just researching right now is um, SLS, which is sodium lauryl sulfate, which actually you see it in a lot of foaming products, but you actually don't really, um, it's not really truly a naughty ingredient, but what happens in the manufacturing process, this other uh, contaminant called one uh, for dioxane, that actually gets filtered into um, what we call SLS. And that is a major carcinogenic, which can cause, you know, a multiple, uh, multiple of disease states. And, and right now, we're kind of at the tip of the iceberg where we're starting to um, research and evaluate the long-term effects of some of these dirty ingredients, um, as Christina and I call it, and, uh, and the impact of where it's going. Because um, the children right now, there's, there, we just are going through, you know, the food, the obesity, um, the, the depression. I mean, working in the, in the, the um, pharmaceutical world, you see so many people taking a ton of um, antidepressants and everyone's looking for the magic cure for, um, for um, the different disease states and whether it, they're psychological or um, the system, systemic, we just don't know if it's coming from the foods and all of these pesticides and toxins that are in our food and our personal care. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, a, it's just uh, yeah. Yeah, thank it, you for it's really about education. No, that's uh, thank you for sharing that. I mean, uh, I'll turn to to your uh, partner there in just a moment, but I wanted just to say something that came to my mind. I mean, I'm a student of natural medicine. Uh, I've had I've seen a naturopath for about 30 years, but the interesting thing is that in my genes we have high risk for heart disease. You know, my dad passed away a year ago, had a heart attack, there's diabetes, and and on and on and on. And uh, I was a high paid or a high pressure uh, executive traveling and, and had uh, a problem with my cholesterol. They put me on statin drugs and almost had a stroke and an embolism as a result. And I was 31 years old. And when I went back into wow. the doctor, yeah, and, and when I went back, I wrote about this, I think somewhere in my writing. And, and when I went back to the, the doctor, uh, I, I, uh, the doctor said, you got to go back on the medication. I said, why? She said, because there's no other way. And I said, are you kidding? She opened the drug book and she looked at the drug. It was Lipitor. And she went through and she closed it. And then she looked at me and I was sitting in the corner of her office, desperate for an answer. And she said, Tom, we got to get you off the drug because people have died from that, from muscle enzyme buildup. And she told me this story. Yeah. And I said, why didn't you tell me about that? And she said, if I told you about it, you wouldn't have gone on the drug. So I, so I don't want to dominate this, but you got me passionate. I want to finish this because it leads to what you're doing, which is so purposeful and so amazing. Just you got to keep doing it and change the world. I found a naturopathic doctor who in you know 30 minutes diagnosed me completely different and reversed all of my cholesterol and inflammation. And the, one, the things that I learned from that were what I was putting in my body in terms of food and things on my body were causing inflammation and causing high cholesterol, not just diet and exercise. And so since then, I've been drug free. I've had a concussion lately and I'm on a recovery plan with it. And all they want to do is put me on antidepressants. And I'm going like, no way. 
And the specialists, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the specialists are saying like, you're not managing your symptoms. And I'm saying like, thank you very much. I'm going to take back my health. So on that note, let's, 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 let's coin this phrase, take back your skin health. I want to turn it to, uh, to, um, uh, Christine, Christine, that big question about what will the world look like when you're done? Uh, what's a quick snapshot of your, the impact you're making there? I think for me that the vision I have is that my children will have more choices than we ever had in the marketplace and that they'll also be educated like Florence says to demand better products and that actually my grandchildren, that will be the choice that we won't, they won't have to compromise their skin care for their health. Like you said that I think that that for me, that's the bottom line is that's where I want to head. I, I really radical social change. I'm, I'm a little more, you know, about that. I think I'm more of a revolutionary sometimes, but I, I do think it's that simple as well for me that, you know, we didn't, as consumers, we didn't find those choices in the marketplace, Clarissa and I, which led us to, you know, start this sort of social revolution, if you will, this quiet revolution in, you know, Silicon Valley. And then, you know, and, and we know it's possible now. So now I, I think, and as you said, there's so much hope in this millennial generation that they are more conscious and are wanting a better world, a better products, that we're coming right alongside them to say, yes, to demand that. And that can be in the consumer marketplace for our kids and then for our grandchildren. That should just be the standard. I, I would really love to see that as the, the standard. That would be the best. Well, that's awesome. You know, if we took the transcript of the show, took what both of you said, put it into a narrative, that is like powerful. Everybody, that's, those are teaching moments on this show. If you listen to this episode back again, I'm going to listen just for what, what you said. You both have such a worldview. I mean, this thing about uh, creating the future, what I just heard you say, uh, Christine, I mean, I expect that from a NASA scientist. I mean, put a man on the moon, you don't even know how to do it. <laughs> you find a way. You have something here that, <laughs> that is unlimited. And I want to just now turn yeah. to something something else. We're, we're running longer today, and I'm doing this for a reason because there's such, such a great conversation here. And I want to talk about now that you've built this amazing business, uh, you're, 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 you're changing the world with this worldview and passion. Uh, but sometimes, Working together in business as friends and, and partners comes with challenges. There's a lot of people who try to get into business with friends who try to work together. I'll give you an example. And my wife and I talk openly because, you know, we're so close after 23 years that she and I love each other, but we cannot sit in a room and do business together because my office has to be completely organized and everything in its place. And hers is like a bomb shit hit. And, and we have these strengths and these limitations. And yet it just works because... I believe the character we have as a team that we play off each other's limitations and strengths. I've heard many nightmare stories about founders who have stolen from each other, who have sabotaged each other, who maybe can't even get to the door without elbowing because they have big egos. You two sound really connected and really in sync. Uh, you have your strengths and you have your limitations. Tell me about working together, how you make it work day to day. I I actually think that um, it's kind of it's kind of scary because Christine and I I could we 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 finish each other's sentences <laughs> and we uh, we've actually like I will I will see a, like maybe ten designs and I'll pick a couple and then we'll show them to Christine and she'll pick the same the same one and I think that our standard of excellence is pretty high um, and we've actually been able to work on. Um, because we actually have another company as well. We have a consulting firm that Christine started and we actually have been able to work extremely well together and have been on the same page quite a bit. I mean, um, I, I mean, the only thing that we just want is our company to grow bigger and stronger. But honestly, I think that because we, we, we both have put um, our families first and whenever something happens, we make sure that, you know, we, we, um, uh, address our family before we address our businesses and the other one can pick up the slack. But um, I feel like we have had a really true partnership and um, have been able to work forward and move forward together in a, in a really positive and um, synergistic way. Well, that's awesome. Before, before uh, your partner chimes in, I'm going to uh, throw you a curveball and say that's awesome. And that's actually what we all aspire to. So uh, now when your partner to tell us, the uh, what's one of the biggest uh, challenges you've had coexisting in the business? Uh, this is a safe place. There's no blame or any ego involved. 
But what are some of the challenges that you've come across where you've pushed through and you've become stronger as a team? Um, well, I think the, the big lesson for us is um, you just being honest with each other, no matter what it is. And sometimes it's uncomfortable to put that out there, but we don't let anything fester. And then we let it, and we, um, and we have open, honest discussion about it, even when it's difficult. Like, you know, there've been times when I've said stuff and Chris like, oh, you know, we don't always agree on any, everything. And she's like, no, no, no. And, and we have to have those hard, difficult discussions about business. But, um, but we also, I think it is true. We are very fortunate um, in that we share a lot of the similar values. You mentioned high integrity. We both value that. So it comes back to that. We also lead with forgiveness lots of times and kindness so that we, we're not, we've, we don't have to be perfect. We just have to learn. So if one of us does something one way or another, we actually laugh. We're like, oh, remember when we did that and we learned from it and we figured out how to move forward. We take it as a yeah, you're totally right. I think that's <laughs> yeah. a, a big thing for us is that we don't hold anything like that. We just deal with it and go, oh, okay, yeah, oh my gosh, can't believe we did that one. It's true, we do. Yeah, and we totally do that. I think we also appreciate each other's strengths. I mean, Marissa has a lot of, we have a lot of things that are the same, but we also have other things that we're really good at. And, um, and we kind of do that yin yang thing. We help support each other that way too. Um, you know, so I think that's, that's been really good for us. Yeah, that, that, that's funny. It's an amazing comment. I was going in another journey to this way in my head. My, I remember after a few years being together with my wife, she's a career lady, and we totally support each other. We're opposites. In fact, we've done some personality science that I teach in the work I do. And our personality uh, together, they refer to our, our relationship as blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> so, yeah. So the, the interesting wow. thing. The interesting thing is, is that I see in the corporate sector, a lot of leaders who fail, I call it falling into the leadership graveyard. And this is real. It happens in the founder level as well for control issues and all sorts of things. And I think what you two have in spades, and I'm so honored, we admire it, the way you're able to acknowledge that you have limitations. And uh, developing character to me simply means acknowledging your limitations and maybe finding in each other the strength to overcome that. That's when you become a powerful team and, you know, you're both absolutely that. I had this other thought that crossed my mind and it was a, a, a phrase, skin health was soul. <laughs> oh. That to me is of what we're hearing here. It's, it's not about products and science. It's about skin health with soul. What you're doing is connected to the soul and I think your company is going places. I want to ask you uh, maybe one more question before we move to wrapping up here. And uh, this is really one about uh, being a mom. You, you, there you are and you've got children and you're doing this and that's not traditional. I mean, the old generation has old limiting beliefs about roles. And then of course, sometimes if I've heard stories from the women I respect that they're moms and yet they have to make a phone call to the husband saying, go home and put the pot of rice on and change the diaper because I'm going to be late at a meeting. So how, what advice do you give to moms who you know have a dream like you have, but they want, to, they want to make that dream come true, but they have all these other responsibilities. You know, I'm going to chime in on that one because I think that um, having a partner, that's the difference, right? You don't have to go it alone. Be a co-CEO. Find that person who can be a co-founder because then you can do the handoff when you need to. And, you know, and then, I mean, our husbands, we're very fortunate. They're so supportive. They're right there with us. They're giving us ideas. They're helping us out. They're testing products. Um, they're our biggest fans in many respects. But at the same time, you know, there are times when our kids need us or something comes up. And I think we're both the first ones who say, go, go do what you need to do for your kid. And then we cover for the other person. So I think that's the beauty in having, you know, a great partnership and, a, you know, somebody else that you can do the business with. So that's made it, for me, that's made it a real reality. I don't know what, Clarissa, what would you say? You. Oh, I would totally agree. I feel like, um, having another person to lean on and, and having actually a solid team. I mean, um, we're really, we're really blessed and privileged to have a, a amazing team yeah. that supports us. Um, but then having, um, a business partner to actually share with the, and the, and the strategy and who has the same vision and then also is able to support, you know, if we can support each other, that has been a huge, huge, um, advantage that probably a lot of other companies uh, might not necessarily have. And, and 
the startup business is brutal. You know, I mean, starting a small business in California and getting it started is, is not an easy task. Yeah. Well, thanks for saying that. Uh, I was just going to say that, that the failure rate I'm familiar with is about 93% in small business. Yeah. On the other side of it, when you do the number, the research, you find out that the world is powered by uh, small business. What I love about small business too is, and what you're doing is you're creating a legacy for your families. It's an yeah. asset that you can pass on to your children or you can you know, sell for value. Uh, I learned the hard way, but they say when you create your own business, that you create it for sale. And if you're not creating it for sale, meaning putting in the processes and systems so it can run on its own so you can go spend time with the children and the family, exactly. then you're, you're really out of business and you two seem to have that down. Uh, I want to uh, actually say something here that does honor both of you as women in leadership. And I'm going to be transparent here. I have had a beef since I've been in business and I've been in uh, executive leadership. I've run my own companies as well. There's not enough women in leadership. And I think I'd like to get your input on that in a minute about the pendulum swinging. Here's the thing that some of the smartest people now know, and sometimes men are uncomfortable with, there's two types of leadership I talk about. One is transformational leadership and one is transactional leadership. Men are better at transactional leadership. In other words, uh, Clarissa, I'd like you to go and create a new product and uh, in 30 days, get back and sit down with me. Well, if you go ahead and get that draft done with the idea and you come back, I can reward you, you know, with maybe, you know, a pay raise or your bonus or whatever it looks like. A transformational leadership is connecting to the heart. When you can connect to somebody's heart and their true heart where the emotion lies, that's the only pathway I understand in the brain where you can get people ready to take a different direction and change. And so, hey guys, you want to hear this from Tom Dutta, the Quiet Warrior. Uh, these ladies on the line, far more gifts and talent than you're given credit for. We need more uh, dynamic duos uh, in the marketplace and business like we're hearing here today on this show. So now that you're probably all embarrassed because I put, I built you up there, I'm going to turn it back to you both and uh, just have you tell us any last words about the the company where we can connect to it, the, the products, anything you want about that body of work. Well, I just wanted to chime in and say something about that because I, I agree with you that I think that it's something that I've overlooked in my career and not being um, as vocal about, you know, pushing more women in the workplace, being in high tech, I always wanted more, but our numbers were so shy um, and they've continued in that realm being in, whether it's high tech or biotech or whatever you want to be. And so I, I do feel, and Clarissa and I both feel it, it's, we, we want to promote more women in those leadership positions because they are the consumers of our products and be more and represent so that we can get transformational leadership. I, I think you've hit on something there, which, you know, so that we can't have that one day our grandchildren, this will be the standard in their space. So we do have a word about that. Absolutely. And then, um, yeah, and Clarissa, did you want to talk about? Yeah, I wanted to say that um, actually, um, uh, from a parent standpoint, one of the things that Christina and I forgot to mention is that we actually bring our kids into the business and train them on a lot of different business practices that. Um, they might not be exposed to at a young age. And it's like, you know, as we're building our business, we actually would bring the kids in and train them on different things. And then they're starting to understand new topics, new areas um, um, that they might not have ever have seen. And so when they get woven into college and to their next careers, you know, we've actually exposed them to these different types of business practices, thinking and strategies. And so that was one other tip I wanted to give to um, to other working moms and parents is to bring them into the fold. Um, but the other thing I think, um, like exactly what Christine said, is we want to bring in, you know, we love bringing in women and encouraging them, but we want to inspire people. We want to pass the knowledge, you know, all the things that Christine and I have learned, we want to actually, you know, give it down to the next generation because, you know, we've, we've learned all these amazing things and, you don't learn everything in college. You learn things in the workplace. And um, the only way for the next generation to be better is for us to actually share that knowledge. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I really appreciate you saying that. And there's, a, there's some research I found from the Gallup company that says the next generation want bosses, or they don't want bosses. They want coaches and mentors. 
And uh, what you're doing today yeah. is, is what, what I know is thought leadership. I see both of you doing so much media w- and teaching and leaving a legacy, uh, maybe even writing your memoirs one day. So it's just fantastic. Tell us where we can get a hold of uh, your company or both of you. Anything you want to tell us there? Um, you could uh, you could actually um, they can reach us at our website. Um, our website is uh, C the letter C the number two and then CallieClean dot com, which is C A L I C L E A N dot com. Um, they can also call our eight hundred number, which is eight hundred three one seven two zero two nine, or just send us an email. I mean, Christine and I we actually love to engage with our customers. Um, and we actually take the customer service calls because, you know, the best way to f- us to find out about um, situations or problems or issues that the consumers have is to actually talk to our, our customers one-on-one. Um, but you can also send us an email um, at hello at c2calliclean.com. All right. That's fantastic. Well, I'll be sure to embed that in the, the details behind the show. And uh, I know that this will be a legacy that people are going to listen to. There's so many teaching moments and learnings in it. I'm so proud of you both. I love you both and your stories. I want to ask you sort of a surprise question here, and this is a hard question. I'll explain why I'm asking it. Just tell me the names of those w- wonderful souls that you each lost. What, what Did you have names for them? Yeah, my, my son is uh, Benjamin Edward Diffenderfer. Okay, so Benjamin. And- ben, we called him Ben. Ben, okay. Yeah. And- and my daughter was uh, Kasha Catherine Ivani Shetler. Okay. I can hear the Hawaiian. In there. <laughs> yeah. I, I think of that skincare product. You have to be a big tube to put the name on it. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, so I'm going to make an announcement on the show. I, I normally keep this as a private moment. I don't publicize uh, the show award, but I want to just talk to you for a minute before we wrap up here uh, that everybody, we're going to be honoring uh, these amazing uh, leaders and, uh, it, it, it is a purposeful business they've created, but it's a business with souls. I call it, again, skin health with a soul for Clarissa and Christine. Uh, what I do is when we release the show, we've developed what's called the challenge coin. Challenge coins were created in the World War I. They were carried in the pockets by soldiers to commit to themselves, to commit community, to commit a purpose. They also had fun with it. If you didn't show up with yours, you had to buy drinks or dinner. <laughs> These coins now are used around the world to create community. My father uh, was 22 years in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. He would have his coin. Uh, police officers carry them. Uh, so I found a supplier in the United States, sorry, Canada, that created my show coin. It's minted and handcrafted, handpainted. On the front of it is the art for the show. On the back of it is actually the hero's journey narrative illustrated wow. by Joseph Campbell. Now uh-huh. uh, They come in a cherry box and when we release your show, we're inducting both you, Clarissa, and you, Christine, into the Quiet Warrior Tribe. Only 40 of these coins a year will ever go out because not everybody leaves their ego at the door to come on and tell their, their real story. But I'm going to honor your two children, Ben and Kasha. We're going to send you two extra coins because their story has powered you to create this company. And so we're just so proud of all of you. Wow, thank, thank you. you so much. I think you have that transformational leadership, Tom. You got Yeah. Don't discount men in that journey. Thank, thank you. Spread the word. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my Kleenex out of the box. Yeah. You just can't hear it. Uh, so um, on that note, uh, everybody, find this show on, on iTunes or your favorite podcast radio station. Uh, give it a high rating so we can honor both Clarissa and Christine and uh, live with that true passion like you hear from them. Find that purpose that's going to change the world. Live your life that you deserve and desire. Thank you for listening to The Quiet Warrior Show. Create is a motive-based leadership development firm. www.create.ca